Greetings, wonderful entrepreneurs, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 31. I'm Shine, and I am welcoming you today to a real life segment podcast that happens to do with the experience known and granted from being an entrepreneur in the business industry. The mission of this podcast is to make you aware of what could possibly happen as an entrepreneur, what points we need to really consider um, when thinking about a passion or something that we would like to drive home as a profession and how we handle those situations. So welcome. Today, I want to talk about that individual who you have given all of your energy to. You have empowered them in whatever the field it is that your passion drives you to do. And this individual has taken advantage of the opportunity. We're going to talk about those individuals today. Now, some people are just genuinely having a bad day and they just don't know how to express what they're going through because it's so psychologically too much for them. And they may lash out. That's understandable. There also are the individuals who portray to be something that they're not because they take kindness for weakness. This individual will smile, they'll be kind, they'll be nice until you put them in a position where they're uncomfortable with a rule or a guideline or something that's suggested and they'll snap at you. That's the real true them. It's going to take at least three to nine months to maybe, you know, uh, a year to find out um, uh, what these people are capable of really and truly doing based upon the actions in with the, which they perform in your face as an entrepreneur or a practitioner helping to empower someone to do something that you already do on a daily basis. And then there are the straight up narcissists. I'm talking about the individual that will control everything, define it, and it is what it is. And if it's not, then you can kick rocks. Now, I'm not talking about the forward driven, focused entrepreneur who in their own right has that ability to run a successful program with rules, guidelines, and regulations. That's different from someone who is just controlling to be controlling. Someone says, I'm going to create this rule as a barrier for you because you pissed me off. And this is what I'm going to do for you now that you've pissed me off. For example, we can have a a person. Okay. Let's use the criminal justice system. So you have this criminal justice system going and you're about to, you know, embark upon your freedom. And then all of a sudden here comes uh, something that took place. And let's call her Kim. Kim decides to report something, kind of blow the whistle. And Kim is on parole. Kim is on probation. But she feels weakened by the fact that these rules have been instilled and implanted for the barrier because of something that took place with, you know, probation officer or someone who controls some form of her life. And I've seen it happen where barriers are put in place, but they're only put in place for the individual and how they think that it's there. So this individual may go into a world where they just say, I'm going to follow all the rules. We'll just follow the rules. Make the situation better for yourself. Do not buy into the hype of having a pissing contest with someone of authority that is truly and genuinely there based on how you see them. If you feel that the PO or probation officer is not your friend, they're not your friend, then get through the damn situation. You put yourself into it, get yourself out and be done. That's what grown folks do. That's what we as entrepreneurs dealing with real life on real life terms. That's what we do. 
These are going to be times. And then there are going to be clients that are just going to test authority. To test authority means that you're going to try to manipulate something. Kids do it all the time with parents. Oh, we don't have new clothes for school. I feel so bad. I don't feel like, no. Because what you're trying to do is get something from someone because of a pity party that you're telling and sharing with another person. I don't believe in that. As an entrepreneur, I believe that it is a value to be who you are and not put yourself in a position where it's going to be embarrassing for yourself or the other person. You know, yes, to to share your experiences, to share your um your abilities to do this, that, and whatever, that's great. That's a great thing to do. Let me explain to you what I used to do as an as a young adult, a young adult. I used to clean tires. That's what my job was. I'm a good tire cleaner. Oh, uh, that's good to know. So when I meet someone who needs their tires cleaned, guess who I'm going to refer? I'm going to refer the person that stays on my mind, not manipulates the situation to the point where I can't even think. Um, no one really needs the service at this time, but, you know, I will keep you on the Rolodex, you know? These are things that, as I'm going through my entrepreneurial practices myself, working with community, these are the things that I'm finding. I'm finding that people come in with a great passion, a great you know, process, the opportunity to do this and to do that. And then before I can even say, okay, they've burnt out, <laughs> crash and burn. And that's not what we do. We take our time and we research and we journal and we read. We read what matters to us and then we research some more and then we journal some more. And then we go back and reread what we've promised ourselves. We create vision boards. We create manifestation boards where these are things that we're going to do. These are just things that we want. Sometimes people can be so afraid of getting the things that they want for fear that others may reject them. Rejection and success is a, a big part of why a lot of people back away from successful opportunities. Oh, I don't want them to feel that I think that I'm better or oh, I don't want them to feel that, you know, I'm too too I've changed. And that has me stuck because I could never see that. You know. So so that's what I wanted to talk about today and I also wanted to give some ideas about what we can do when dealing with what we can do when dealing with individuals who are difficult to handle when they can't get their way. We got to understand them as much as possible. We got to see what are they going through? Are they going through this? You know, some people can manipulate the game so much to where they can put stumbling blocks in their way just so that they can have a reason to say that they were unable to do this or unable to do, to do that. Now, as an entrepreneur that helps with missions to support and promote success in an individual's life, no matter what level you're on, one thing that I definitely do is let people know when I feel that they're creating a barrier for themselves. I feel you're creating a barrier right now because if you were so impacted by this barrier situation, I've given you options. You've shut down every one of them. So that means you just don't want to hear it. So obviously you're doing one of three things. The first thing is you're just hard-headed and can't get it. You're not trying to hear it and you're going to do it your way. The second thing is you are trying to figure out doing this on your own. And sometimes doing things on your own is the hardest thing to do, especially when you have no idea what you're doing. And the third and final thing, you are manipulating the situation, trying to see how you can manifest something in order to get something else. 
For example, an individual is walking into a job and trying to get an interview and they're calling, you know, someone to pick them up. Oh, come and get me, come and get me. And then the next thing you know, the person can't do it because they're somewhere else. What's the first thing that that person is going to say if they're trying to truly feel that they're going to get something for nothing? They're going to say, oh, you're the reason why. Never let a person in the entrepreneurial experience be the reason to point the finger at you as you're the reason why they failed. And yes, some people are going to come and be bold enough to do that. Just like some people are going to try to steal opportunities of success and say that you're successful because of them. So we got to be very mindful of that. Um, Then we want to, after we understand what they're going through, we want to ask them why they're giving you a hard time. Okay. Sometimes what we got to do in my, my case, I just say, okay, I've overstepped a boundary. I apologize. And this is what I'm going to do from now on A, B, and C. And I'm going to stick to that. Some people may feel that that's harsh, that that's cruel, but when someone slaps you in the face for being kind and you give them the opportunities that they are afforded and you know that they've been successful in the past and they don't want to hear it, no, you just do what you do for the area of existence that you are dealing with them in their lives. So if I am a business developer All I'm going to do is talk about business. I don't want to talk about your health. I don't want to talk about your your, uh, personal finances since that is not, I'm, I'm overstepping boundaries. As a professional, when you tell me this is my business and it's personal, but when you bring personal business to me, from that point on, an entrepreneur has the obligation to never step back into that realm of the very thing that they said was personal. So it helps them grow, but yet it makes the entrepreneur feel empowered and in control, okay? And then after that, when you get there, if they're upset, you apologize and you let them know, I'm sorry, but you know, the world is not all yours. I mean, I have things to do. I have other clients to service. I have this to do. I have that to do. I do apologize. But I also understand both of our positions. And uh, try not to shut them down. No, it's not shutting down. If I'm having a situation with someone who tells me I'm, I'm in their personal business, quote, in their personal business, then what I'm going to do is let them know I am going to back away and I am dealing specifically with the goals that are precisely what we're here to do. And then when they try to bring me back in, because they will, that's when I have to decide what is personal and what is business, what is not going to be done in a business forum or setting and what I consider personal. I then at that time as the entrepreneur has the authority to calm down the situation so that I won't get upset and see it's turning the tables. It's putting the control back into my hands because nobody, one thing I will not do is have a pissing match with a client. And I say that wholeheartedly because it has happened before And it doesn't turn out great. And I've learned from that. And now it's time to level that up. Telling someone to calm down is usually going to create the opposite effect, especially if they think you're not too understanding of their situation. And that's what takes place as well. People seem to know everything, but yet they have not been successful. So why argue with them? They're going to do it their way. Let them hit their head. And I don't care how old they are. Sometimes people could be 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, still doing the same thing. Some people are just here to experience 
whatever it is they're experiencing when they got to that level and when they stop the the uh, mentality growth of that level and they can't go beyond that, that's what they came to do. And we as entrepreneurs can't change that. Our learning curve is just that. And we don't know when it curves in anyone's life anyone's life. And I've learned that as an entrepreneur. And so it just makes me feel so good to know that I am, I'm moving forward with maturity. I'm leveling up. I'm realizing that what battles I choose to fight, the extreme parts of that has to do with dealing with people who are manipulators people who are congested with their own um, bull crap and needs an enema. (laughs) You know, the Joker said it best, this town needs an enema because people have been used to gathering and learning how to manipulate. Listen, if a 10-year-old child, a 9-year-old child can come and teach a manipulation tool to the point where no control, no control whatsoever. And, and when they're tapped into it, they claim mental health. That is a manipulator that is going to go down the wrong path in this life and use health as a mental health as a crutch. But they're smart enough to know that they can use it. So does that make them mentally challenged? Or are they manipulators in the name of who they come to be. And see, these difficult people, these clients that we speak of, we may meet them every now and again. Some of them may be completely sporadic. Some of them may have nothing at all to say because they know they're in the wrong. There's nothing that you can do to even explain to them because to explain to them will have to make them level up and they're not trying to be level On the up position, they're trying to be as manipulative and basic as they can to get what they want to stay comfortable in their position so that they can always be and live free and easy. Live free and easy off of others if they have to manipulate and bamboozle the world, um, you know, use crutches as excuses and why they are who they are. And then at the end, they're going to blame everyone else around them. You know, there have been times where I have literally lost clientele because of manipulators who I surrounded myself by in in housing, in business development, in skill sets. And there's no way that you know this is going to happen. You're giving everybody that opportunity. But it's only when you're in the midst of the program will Judas show his face. Will, (laughs) you know, the liar or the manipulator or the narcissist show out. And then that's when you have to My grandmother always said that's when you show them that they need to be taken care of, okay? I'm going to let you know that was a very, very horrible thing that you've done. You've done this in the midst of a professional situation. Please remove yourself or be silent. Or if not, I am going to have to call back up. (laughs) You know, it gets that deep sometime in the midst of something as professional as even a consortium a real live play, a real live shooting of a video that is going to be submitted to Netflix. <laughs> I know authors of, of um, film, producers, film producers, they know exactly what I'm talking about because these people show up in all different areas. Sometimes they're even in your own household, you know, especially those parents who don't believe that the hard to deal with individual is a mastermind manipulator playing them because they only see the good in the child 
because that's their child. So when you see it, you call it out, entrepreneur, because that's what we need to do. And in this chronicle, the goal here is to help empower you to deal with the individual who is the difficult one, the one that everybody else is doing what they need to do. They're focusing and shout out to all of my individuals who are part of any of the programs in which you, in which you are a part of internationally, nationally, in Ohio, out of Ohio. It's just a wonderful, amazing time where we can truly say that life is doing some phenomenal things for us. And, and I'm trying to, I'm not trying, I am actually pushing forth the program of how to deal with the other side of business, you know, and these things are going to come up in your business journey. So please be mindful of that and know that you are not alone. Know that, you know, sometimes you may want to cry. Sometimes you may cry in front of the person because you can't believe that they've done you the way that they've done you. Sometimes you want to sit back and laugh because it keeps you from crying. And then finally, there are some times where you just got to write them off and say, mm, okay, that's why you came around. Okay, I get it now. And then there's finally, finally, those times where you just have to X them out because you cannot help those who are not willing to help themselves. Thank you so much for being a part of the Chronicles of a Nonprofit. This is episode 31. Please like, comment, and share these vital videos with someone who may be an entrepreneur, who may be starting out, or who may just need some basic life conversation during a time where we're just raising kids. I remember I wish these videos were out when I was raising my 12 and 13 year old twins. I wish they were out when I was 21, 22, going to college, because I would have been the number one <laughs> subscriber to the channel because I would have just only listened because I know that there are things that go on in the minds of youth and children that parents have no idea of what is going to take place because this is your first run as a guardian, as a parent. So thank you so much for being here. I hope this was helpful and impactful to you. And as always, keep it 100 and we will see you next time.